sales objections. They're the thing that stops you from winning business as a business owner and sales professional. So how do you deal with them? What are the things you have to do in order to overcome the objection and make sure it doesn't hamper and stop that deal from happening? My name is James White, I'm a small business sales expert. And in this video series, I'm showing you how to, with a few slides and a few resources, on what you can do to overcome some of the key sales challenges and problems that business owners and sales professionals have. I've already covered how to use video for marketing and how to qualify your leads more effectively. And in this video today, I'm gonna to talk about objections, how you can overcome sales objections and make sure that you're dealing with them the right way to hopefully go on and win the business. Let's have a look at the video. So as I mentioned, sales objections are one of the most common things that I get asked as a sales mentor and trainer. People will say to me, James, I'm really unsure about how I cope with it when someone says your price is too high or I need to have a think about it. What can I do? So in this video, I'm going to share with you, like I've done in other previous videos, a whole approach to take when it comes to handling sales objections. And I'm going to do that with some slides because this video series is all what I call a how-to approach. So rather than me just giving you video information, I want to give you the absolute details that you can use in your own sales activity in order to overcome objections. So here's what we're going to cover off a little bit today. Firstly, how can you avoid them? And by the way, this is very difficult to do, but how can you overcome objections? What they actually are, what's actually happening when this takes place, how not to handle them. And this is where a lot of people get it badly, badly wrong. And I don't want you being in the position where you lose an opportunity that you spent time and effort working on because you handled the objection badly. And then going to give you a really great framework that you can use to deal with any objection. Simple acronym called LAIR. We're going to cover it off in a moment. And then I'm going to give you some objection responses to use. So here's a little thing that you've got to really think about in terms of how to avoid objections. I've talked in a lot of my presentations and my materials, and if you've heard me at a course or material, you, you see it before, I talk around the four phases of sales and the four things you've got to get in your head and mindset when you're thinking about who you're working with. The first is there has to be that problem or desire, problem or want of where someone wants to achieve. And if they haven't got a problem or desire, you're never going to sell anything to anyone. But the next phase of sales is critical. It's the understanding phase. And I always believe that 70% of the whole sales activity is spent here. And the reason this is so important for objections is most of the time, when I hear clients and people talk to you about objections, what they've done is they haven't asked enough questions to really understand the pain and the issues going on with the individual client or prospect they're talking to. And because they haven't asked enough questions, the reality is it just doesn't happen from there. So one of the core elements, and before we then get to the stage of being able to show them that we can solve their problem and they trust us, we've got to understand them. And one of the biggest issues that people don't do, and this is why the, my final how-to video is about how you can use great questions to get the right reaction that you want, is you've got to focus on probing and digging further into the answers that your prospects give you. So, for example, if I was having a conversation with someone and they were saying, well, we've got a challenge in this area, I wouldn't just sort of think, okay, great, and move on. I'd say, you mentioned you've got a challenge in this area. Tell me a bit more about that. And if they then said, well, it's a challenge that's caused by X, Y, and Z, I then use my tone and say, sounds like that's causing you a lot of stress and strain. Tell me more about that. The reason we want to probe and dig further, but in an empathetic way, so it fits with the other person, is that when would they then come to talking about the project or the price or the proposal, and they say, oh, I'm not sure, you're able to go back and say, well, a couple of hours ago or a couple of weeks ago, you told me that this, this, and this was really critical for you, and it was causing you stress and strain, and what's changed since then? When you ask the right amount of questions and you know exactly the dynamics of the sales situation, you could overcome an objection. If you haven't probed, and the little dog's a good example, that dog will probe and find the, the bone that it's got. If you don't do that in a sales situation, you will not be able to overcome the objection. And the reason being, because the objection is a smoke screen that people put up. They're a barrier. So when people say to me, what are objections? They are just hurdles and barriers that get in our way as sales professionals and business owners. They are things that stop us from making the progress that we want. But like with a barrier or a hurdle, it doesn't mean you can't overcome them. 
But if you handle them badly, unfortunately, you get a train wreck and you get a deal lost and gone and that train isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And we don't want that to happen with the lead, especially if you've put time and effort. Objections generally happen at the end of the sales process. So you might spend lots of time, lots of effort, lots of energy, lots of cost on working with someone, engaging with someone, talking to them for a long period of time. And then finally, you get this objection. You think, oh, goodness me, I haven't handled it. And the reason that we don't handle it very well is because our brains have something called our amygdala. And our amygdala basically is our fight or flight mechanism. It's what we born with as humans to protect ourselves from dangerous situations and challenging moments. And the thing is that happens is when we get a sales conversation that's different to what we thought or isn't quite where we want it to be or someone challenges us or puts pressure on us, we know the, the examples of what happens. Like we get a bit pale, we get a bit flushed, we start trembling, our body starts to react to it, our heart rate goes up and we start to panic. And that's what happens in sales situations if you are not prepared for the objection that comes through, if you haven't trained your brain. And the way that we deal with this in sales is we have to get comfortable, A, training our brain to say, when this happens, I know what I'm going to do, which is what we're going to talk through today. But we also have to be in a position where we practice. There was me when I was a young kid hitting a ball against the wall to try and become a better footballer. And if you don't practice, if you don't practice how you use some phrases and objections with maybe colleagues or family members or, or other people, then you're going to struggle to actually overcome the issues that you have. So what we want to be able to do is train our brain, control how we react to the objection so that we deal with it in the right way and move on and get the business in place. So here's how not to approach objections. Here are some of the things I see people doing, and I'm going to encourage you really to make sure that you take a note of these eight points. They're critical when it comes to obje uh, handling an objection. The first thing is this. You might have, for example, given a pricing proposal information to, to a prospect. And the first thing they'll say to you is, oh, I think this is this. And you try and interrupt them. I hear people saying, oh, I know what you're going to say. It's this about this. about this. Let them speak. Don't try and interrupt them. You've got to let that person get their thoughts out rather than try and anticipate what they say. It frustrates people when you do it. It makes them think you're not listening to them and it's going to turn them off you rather than bring them closer to you. The second thing is this. Do not ignore or override the objection. Don't just think that you can bat it off and then it won't matter because it will. It's a barrier that stops that prospect from working with you. So what you've got to be able to do is to understand what it's going on and make sure you handle the objection and not just think, oh, it'll be OK, it'll be fine. The third thing, and this is a critical thing you've got to do, and this is what one of the biggest mistakes I see that business people do, especially they're trying to sell, is they think that just talking at the objection will make the difference. So someone says, oh, the price is a little bit high. Oh, well, the reason our price is a little bit high is because we're really good quality in this area. And what we do is we do this in this, and then this do this, and this do this, and this is why it's good quality. And they talk, 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 talk at the other person rather than trying to get inside their mind of really what they're thinking. And when they do that, all it does is make the other person think they're not listening, they're not listening, no, this can't work for me. And the potential deal gets lost. We don't want to be in that position. We really want to be in a position where we're really trying to get inside the other person's head and find out where they're at. And that's why point number four is we want to give ourselves that bit of moment, that bit of time. If we can, we don't want to rush headlong into talking. We want to give ourselves that couple of seconds, 10 seconds if possible, where we pause and give ourselves time to let that training and that work that we've identified build back up. We want to let our brain not just go into that, oh, fight or flight mode, but control the situation and know what we're going to do. And here's the other thing. We want to approach the objection in a way that we feel comfortable with. I'm going to tell you now, 95% of objections are probably within, a, there are five to 10 objections that cover 95% of all sales issues. So if we know that, then actually we can prepare for it, like with a video like this, and know how to handle it. So when it does handle, happen, and if we practice and prepare our brain, we know what to do to solve it. Point number six is this, don't just try and say something that you've said before and expect a different result. It may well be that you say, well, as I, as I mentioned in our proposal, we're really good at this. If they've looked at that information, they still hasn't given them the information they need, that's not going to work. So what you've got to try and do is find out what else they might need, what other information might be required. What is it you haven't shared with them that could be critical that will help them overcome that objection? And point number seven is don't just assume that when you've given your response, that's it, it's done. We want to actually qualify and be sure 
that this has handled their issue. Have what you've showed them made them feel comfortable to then move forward and go forward with you. And then that's the key thing. We want to then be in a position where we don't leave the conversation without knowing what happens next. We want to be able to talk, make sure we've answered the objection, covered the point, and then talk about how you can move forward, whether that's another meeting or a proposal or whatever, or even a conversation to get the contract signed, hopefully. We want to be able to be clear that we can say, really enjoyed covering that off. I'm glad we've covered that off for you. Have we covered what you required? Sounds like we have. Great. In which case, then, why don't we suggest next Thursday or get some contracts in place right now? Or let's get the contracts in place so we can sign and get started. We want to know what's going to happen next, because if you leave it open, things go awry and we don't want that. So I generally believe there are three main reasons why objections happen. The first thing is this. They just need more information. They don't have enough information about what you do or how it will work or how the system, the pricing operates. There's just other things that go on in that person's head that make them think rather than going forward and committing to the deal, they just need to get some other stuff completed. The second point is that they just don't see enough value. And I do a lot of workshops and work with my clients on how you can make sure that your value is really appealing to the audience you're targeting. This one's a critical one. They just don't see enough value in order to be able to buy your service. And ultimately, you haven't shown them that you're worth paying that amount of money for. And if you can't show them that, don't be surprised when a prospect sees your proposal, sees your quote and thinks it's not worth it. We see this a lot in professional services, especially in businesses that and organizations that may be in the finance space or the legal space. The cost of someone's time and the energy to solve something versus the value and price is differentiate, is a differentiator. And the prospect just doesn't see enough reasons to do or to solve it. That's when, again, these probing questions are critical. If we've asked the right question, we know we can get the right response. And we can say, you talked about the implications of this issue three months ago, two weeks ago, and actually how it was causing X, Y, and Z stress. Surely it's worth paying that little bit more in order to get this dealt with. And the final point around why it doesn't, why it happens is at the moment, change is the biggest factor that you've got to get anyone to a new place. Not change from an existing supplier, but change from their current position, their current status quo to this new world or this new place that you're talking about. And unless you can talk about what the new way offers over and above the old way that solves their problem and deals with their issues, it's difficult to make them make that change. So we really want to be careful about that. These three reasons are why it generally happens. So always have them in your mind when you're engaging with prospects. And I always say to people, I think I call it the four P's of prospect delay. There are generally four reasons why your prospects are not basically committing to working with you. The first one is the pain is not big enough. There's simply just not enough pain in there for them to actually deal with the issue. I've got a problem at the moment with my back and, it, and I went to the chiropractor yesterday. I was happy to pay that bit more because the pain was there. Your pain point is key, key, key for these people. The second point is that it's not just not a priority for them. It is painful for them, but they've got other things on their list. And so we have to understand through the questions that we ask as to where your solution or what you do fits into their priorities. The third thing is it's not personal for them. In other words, it's not going to affect them really. It's something that they'd like to get solved, but it's not cool. It's not something that's really personal for them or going to have a personal impact on their life or who they are. And the fourth thing is that it's just not a passion. It's not something they get excited about. It's not something they really feel that they, they want to solve and makes them feel buzzing to get it resolved or to get it, you know, something in place. So those four Ps, the pain, the personal, the passion, the priority, make sure you've understood those within your conversations with prospects. And the root cause behind the objection, as I mentioned, that probe, that little dog, is to ask the right questions in the right way to get the right information. And in the next how-to video that's coming out in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to show you how you can ask the right questions to get the right answers. So if you are in a position where a prospect's giving you an objection, really think about this simple four-step approach to handle any objection. As I mentioned in that first point around how to not handle the objection, the first thing you to do is to listen. We've got to listen to the other person. Let's use our ears rather than our mouth and listen to what they're saying, but also listen to the body language and the general vibe they're giving off. Are they, you know, saying words with a certain type of tone or are they saying information that in a certain type of way? We've got to listen and look and see what's going on there to really understand how the other person's talking about things. The second thing is this, we've got to acknowledge what they've said. And I really encourage you to acknowledge that you, the person, we want to show that we've understood their position, that we've really been able to accept that there's something that's happening that way. 
The third thing is we then want to what we do called an identification. And it's a maybe it's sometimes called a label, but we want to identify what the issue is. And the fourth issue then is we want to respond and we want to respond with a question, something we can do to find out the information. So an example of this might be if your prospect has said to you, hey, your, the pricing is too high for, for this service. Here's how you might respond. You might respond with a, look, you know, listen to what they said. You might acknowledge by saying, look, thanks ever so much for letting me know that, James. I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts. Identify. It would seem from what you said that you don't feel like the, the value of what we're offering is in line with what you thought, you know, or comfortable paying. It seems like I've identified what I think I'm seeing there. And then we want to respond. What would you need to see in order to feel it's worth paying that amount of money for? What would you need to see in order to feel it's worth paying that amount of money for? So we've acknowledged the issue. Thanks for letting me know. I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts. It sounds like we've not been able to show you enough of the value in our solution. What would you need to see to feel like it's worth paying that amount of money for? And then we want to let the prospect talk. We want to let them tell us what's going on and what they're thinking and what they're seeing. Because actually, if at that point we then keep talking, keep talking, we're going to do all the things that we know don't work. So if you use this phraseology layer, it's a great way in which you can get the right results with your prospects. So think about layer as a method to handle objections. It works, especially if you can give yourself that few moments, 10 seconds or so to pause and get yourself in the right place. So look, here's a couple of different objections that you're going to see on different calls. And you might get those when you're first engaging with a new prospect for the first time, or you might get it when you've engaged with someone and put a proposal together and they've said they need to cancel or the price is too high. Classic one is, for example, when you're making an initial call with someone or first meeting and someone will say, send me some information. And what generally tends to happen is they're doing that just to be nice to you because they don't really want the information and therefore they're just going to see the email and bin you off. So I might say to someone, look, I really appreciate that. And I'm very happy to, to share some information with you. But so I don't waste your time. What information would be, you know, be really useful to, to, to make sure it's a good fit for your business? Or I might say to them, look, thanks for letting me know that, you know, John. It sounds like, uh, you know, it seems like from what you said that you, you've got a lot of things going on at the moment. So being honest with you, what would I have to show you that would be of interest? We want to still try and make sure we handle the objection in the right way, not by talking at them, but by listening, acknowledging, identifying and responding. And we want to use those what, how, tell me more, show me, talk me through questions rather than do you or how, you know, would you? That gives us a closed answer. When we get closed answers, it's difficult for us to be able to make the impact we want. Here's a really, really great uh, slide that I encourage you to take a screenshot of when they handle that price objection. When people talk about pricing and they say, oh, the price is too high. And what a lot of people tend to do is they say, oh, well, actually, the price is too high because of these reasons. And they talk, talk, talk. Whereas actually, I think it's a great question. To someone, you know, appreciate you letting me know that, John. Sounds like we're not where, you know, we, we, sounds like we've not been able to show you our value. How far apart on price are we? Or really appreciate what you've told me. It seems like that there's, you know, that there's a, there's a, there's a bit of a thing here we've got to work through. And, and, and that, you know, maybe the service of what we offer and the quality of that isn't in line with your thoughts on price. How do you decide on price versus quality? So we want to ask these questions, or what were you expecting it to cost? These are phrases that if we ask in the right way can help us overcome the objection. And what we've got to then do is listen to the other person, and sometimes you've got to continue to probe. If they say to you, oh, well, I was expecting it to cost uh, £100 and your service is £200, okay, thanks, for appreciate it, let me know that. What makes it worth £100 to you, and what, 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 what haven't you seen to make it feel like it's worth paying £200? And they might say, oh, it's because it's not got this, this and this. Mention that to me. You haven't, maybe there's a bit of the value of what we've shown hasn't been, you know, been clear. What can we do to show you that value? Or what, what do you feel is important in that area that would make you feel comfortable paying that? You sometimes need to keep probing to make sure you overcome the objection. Or you might need to be able to show them some information that shows them how by spending £200 rather than the £100, they're going to deal with the problem for a number of years to come. So doesn't it make sense to deal with the issue now once and for all rather than have it continue to appear again? Or how would you feel if it came back time and time again? We've got to be able to try and deal with the issue there and then. Another great you know, objection that you'll get is, uh, is, oh, I want to think about it. This is a classic one, where, especially when people have had a proposal that they generally just don't feel is, is, is right for them or too expensive for them. So one you want to, again, think about that layer model. Thanks for letting me know that. I really appreciate that you, you know, you need some time to think about it. And it sounds like that 
you know, where you were is a little bit you know, different to where you are now. Be honest with me. What would you need to see to put your trust in us to work work together? Or really appreciate you telling me that. Be honest with me. You know, how do you really feel about this? How do you really feel about this solution? Or appreciate your honesty. But you know, what what would make you say? What would have made you say yes? I think this is a good solution to go forward. Again, the way we ask the question and the way we ask the question back on the objection is key. Ask in the right way. We're going to get hopefully the prospect to open up and tell us what they're thinking, so we can then try and work out a solution. Or if it's not going to be possible, then that is the case sometimes when we go our separate ways. But we need to find out what's inside their head to know where we go. Or another one will be, look, uh, you know, people will say, look, I don't have the time for this right now. They've, they've spoken to you on the conversation and they said, I don't have the time for this. So actually, again, the layer approach. Thanks ever so much for letting me know that. I really understand, I understand and appreciate your situation. Just, you know, let me, let me be honest with you. It sounds like you don't see any value in a service like this. Or have I got that wrong? So it may well be that you can just ask the question, they don't see any value or they don't quite know what it's going to do for them right now. So you might want to say, look, I totally understand. Some of my existing customers didn't realize they could gain the value for the service, but doesn't it make sense to at least hear what we've got to say so I can show you the impact? If it's not, I'll leave you to it. How does that sound? So we want to try and show them the value of the time approach for it. Or again, like you say, this idea of, of, of I don't need it. You know, people will say, oh, well, actually, I, I don't need to, to, I don't need this service. It's not right for us right now. Appreciate your honesty, John. What, you know, it sounds like you, you know, you've got a lot of things going on at the moment and this isn't high up in your priority list. What would you need to see to think it could be, you know, higher up for you? The key thing when we deal with this, these objections and the final one, for example, being I'll look at it later, is again to get inside the other person's head. We want to be in a position where we ask them questions. I totally understand that. Thanks for letting me know. What would be the impact if you forgot to do this and a problem occurred? Get inside their head, ask the right questions, and you're going to get the right reaction and response. So look, this video is a short video to give you some ideas and objection handling. I do courses and materials and conversations with so many business people all over the world to help them with this. So if you're in the position where you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure how to handle this, and I'd love a bit more help and support, reach out to me. We do an initial session where we'll, handle, we'll help you handle this and deal with some of these sales challenges. Put the comment in the section below. We'll put a contact form in the, sec in the, in the comments below so you can try and get in contact. And we'll just look, we'll open up a conversation. I had a guy from YouTube last week ask me a question. And I jumped on a call and we handled it. We're really open to do that to help you achieve the results. But here's how you want to handle the objections as a summary. Pause for a few seconds. If you can get to five to 10 seconds, it will help. It will enable your brain to start thinking about things. Allow the prospect to talk and explain their reasons. Don't interrupt them. Try and find out really what's going on with them. Don't be afraid to respond when they do come back with these rejections. It doesn't mean you lose the deal. You've got to train your brain to cope with that situation and then react back. And remember, it's not just personal against you. They're not adding to you, but they just don't see in their head the reason to go forward. And we've got to try and help understand that and hopefully change it. We've got to be in a position where we really get to know their heart, what's going on in their mind, in that to, to deal with the logical things. But people buy with their heart. They buy for emotional reasons. That stress, those joy, the pain, those are the emotions we want to create. So we've got to be able to talk a little bit in our conversations as to how we can help solve those issues for people. We want to get them to picture something. We want to get them to picture a scenario, especially in our responses. Can you, you know, what would be the position if you could get this resolved and in four weeks time, be looking at this, this and this, and this is handled. How would that feel? We want to be able to get them to picture something when we're thinking about it. And the key thing is the only thing the prospect wants is for the problem or to, to go away or for them to achieve their goal. We've got to show them that. We've got to give them evidence of how we make it happen and bring it to life for them. And again, like I always say, it's never just the price. It's just they don't value what you offer. Give the value, show them what you can difference you can make. And remember that layer approach in how we do things. So look, it's an absolute pleasure for me to do videos and to share ideas. I hope this has been helpful. My Facebook group, I'm going to put a, it will put some links into me on Facebook where you can access my page, my Twitter, my Instagram. I'm an open book to share as much information around sales and helping you as a business owner or a sales professional get the right results. I'd love to support you, help you do what you need to do to overcome these objections and make sure you're winning great business. So hopefully you found this video useful. It's all about objections and finding the right way to overcome these challenges. If you have, love you to comment on the set on the video below, share it with others, 
let's make sure we get loads of business owners all over the world handling these objections right in order to move forward and win great business. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you've enjoyed. Please like the channel, subscribe it, share it with others. And I look forward to sharing another video with you next Saturday. Take care. Bye.